What's happening, everybody? Can Mike Elko surprise everybody and go 10-2 and two in his first season as an SEC coach at Texas A&M? Our spring preview continues with the Aggies Locked on SEC starts right now. You are Locked on SEC, your daily podcast on the Southeastern Conference. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And what is up, everybody? Welcome into Locked On SEC. It's great to have you guys along on today's show. We continue our spring series talking about the Texas A&M Aggies, year one of Mike Elko. I'm Chris Gordy. Thanks for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. Shout out to every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network covering your team every day. All right, we stop off over in College Station today as we preview all things Texas A&M with our buddy Andrew Stefaniak, host of Locked on Aggies and Andrew, uh, welcome in, man. It has been uh, it's been fun. We've been doing this thing going around all the different uh, teams around the the SEC, and uh, the Aggies are kind of that that quiet sleeping giant over there. They had the big giant buyout with Jimbo Fisher, and they hired Mike Elko, not maybe the sexiest name to hire. So uh, they're kind of just laying in wait over there, but uh, a team that is still loaded nonetheless, right? Of course, and you know it's funny. I think. Um... Texas A&M for so long has been the polar opposite of what they are right now. They're this, they're the hyped up. Oh, look at these five stars. This team's going to be incredible. And then this year, no one's really talking about Texas A&M, but like you said, 10 and two, we're going to get into that. We're going to get into the schedule, but this team can be good. They lost a lot in the portal. I think they brought a lot in, in the portal that can help. So I, I feel good about this Texas A&M team, and I know a lot of folks have heard that. They've heard that for years, and they're sick and tired of hearing, this is the year for Texas A&M. They're going to be good, but Texas A&M has done a lot well, and I think Elko is going to build an incredible culture that I don't think was there under the previous regime that will lead to wins on the football field. So I'm excited about the current state of Texas A&M football. Yeah, Jimbo Fisher a little bit uh, less stodgy and, or, or, or rather, uh, Mike Elko less stodgy and stuck in his ways like Jimbo was. Uh, real quick before we get into Elko on the football team, they did make some news this week uh, with their new athletic director, Trev Alberts, coming over from Nebraska. I know he spoke with the media uh, earlier this week. Any takeaways from what he had to say there? Well, you know, of course, he wasn't a part of the hiring of Coach Elko, but I do love this quote from him during his. Um, introdu- introduction press conference. He says on Coach Elko, that's a real football coach. He knows how to build a culture and how to build a team. I'm excited to get to work with him. So, you know, he he uh, comes from Nebraska. And the funny thing about this is, is Texas A&M in men's and women's in the NCAA tournament play in Nebraska to open the um, the NCAA tournament, which is hilarious. But um, I think he's it's a good hire. I, I think um, everything I saw, a good family, good person, um, and I think that quote from about Coach Elko is spot on. So I'm, I'm excited about this hire. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. It's the backwards. Normally, it's like you want your athletic director and then want your AD to hire the, the football coach. They did it the other way. They hired the football coach and now <laughs> hired the AD. But important thing is that they were on the same page and they're ready to work together. So let's talk a little bit about Mike Elko, um, a former defensive coordinator there at AM and did a great job and got a chance to go show what he could do at Duke and made Duke a nationally prevalent team, you know, right to the top 25 over there. So uh, maybe not the sexiest of hires uh, in terms of names that could have been out there. But look, when you're paying $77 million for Jimbo Fisher to go away, uh, you want to make sure you hire the right football coach and a guy who's going to win football games and knows football. And Mike Elko seems like he checks all those boxes as far as a football guy. Yeah. And, and you know, I'll be honest. I, at first, was not stoked about the hire. I wasn't. I was, and kind of what you said was the reason why. We're not paying this buyout to go and get a name like that. We're paying this buyout to go get, uh, you know, some people were saying uh, DeBoer, which would have been tough with, you know, him going to the playoff. Then some were saying maybe Dabo Sweeney. There were a lot of names that floated around that were, you know, more attractive names than Mike Elko. And I was against it, but then they make the hire. He's been here, you know, what, three months. He's hit the portal hard. He closed the recruiting class hard. And I, I said it on my show today, actually, ironically. I am eating my words on this. I think the hire so far has been 
in A. I mean, in A or an A+, plus, he's done a great job in everything he can do. Now that has to turn into wins on the football field, X's and O's. I also love his coaching staff. I really love Colin Klein. I think that is a grand slam hire, grand slam hire. I think I've talked about it. I, I, I keep telling the Aggie fans, enjoy Colin Klein now because he will be a head coach very soon. So I think Echo did a great job when it comes to his staff. I think he's done incredible in the portal. He closed the recruiting class well, holds on to a Terry Bussey, goes and gets some talented players. So I think that he has really exceeded my expectations thus far. And I'm, as I said a moment ago, I'm excited for the future of Texas a and football under Mike Elko. Yeah, it's so fascinating when we talk about, you know, Connor Wegman, um, you know, very talented, highly touted recruit that came there. And, you know, obviously Jimbo Fisher had his hands on him. But now Colin Klein gets his chance to to show what he can do with Connor Wegman. And talk a little bit about this this offense and what we can expect. Because, you know, Connor, like we said, was a highly touted recruit and was looking good last year before he got hurt very early in the season. And they had to pivot to Max Johnson and so on and so forth. But Still a lot of pieces on that offense, particularly wide receiver. They lose Evan Stewart, obviously, to the portal. But bringing back Moose Muhammad, Noah Thomas, Shade Walker, Micah Tease. I mean, there's some talented guys there that were in, on that receiving core. Exactly right. It, you know, Connor Rigman, I am like the CEO of the Connor Rigman hype train. I think he was on his way to an incredible season last year. Gets derailed by injury. And it seems like Texas A&M just can't catch a break with their quarterbacks going down with injuries. It happens every year, it seems like, which is why having depth is so important. And I think they do in the quarterback room. But I think Wegman's going to have a great season. I really do. I, I, now, he's got to get healthy. He's still fighting back. His availability in spring is still – there's been some question marks. What's he going to do? He – um told the media the other day, you know, he, he's feeling better. He's still got a few, check a few boxes to get back to, you know, real live, good to go football. And, but the receiving core, I am a huge Jaday Walker guy. I, I it, you know, Moose Muhammad, that is forever a mystery. What his deal was last season is beside me. Dude can play football. It, 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 you know, I mean, you watch him play and he makes great catches. These one hand catches, that's not what, what is so great about him. It's just the way he plays football. He gets open. He wins the 50-50 balls. Noah Thomas, huge receiver, 6'5", 6'6", guy, can win the 50-50 ball, but he's also a crisp route runner. I think you did a good job with a couple guys in the portal. I really like this Jabri Barber kid um, uh, from Troy, almost in a 1,000-yard receiver a year ago. He, he actually had 999 yards, which is funny. It's like he's one yard away from the incentives like we see in the NFL. but. Um, this receiver room is in a good spot. These guys are going to be able to create separation. Losing, not to be honest with you, I'm more upset about the loss of Anaya Smith than I am the loss of Evan Stewart. You know, Anaya Smith is on to the NFL. Evan Stewart is a talented guy. I, I like the kid. I just think he was a bit of a head case when it, you know it comes to, as a football player. He, he's struggled to stay on the field and you know nil conversations. There's just a lot there. Um, good kid, but. I think that the receivers we have now, I really like this room. I'm gonna we're gonna miss Nia Smith, talented guy, can really play. He's gonna do something in the NFL. I don't know what, but he's gonna do something. And he actually worked yeah. out as a running back today, believe it or not. Um, in the oh yeah, in the a, a and had, yeah. Their, had their pro day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the the other guy I'm excited to get back to is a guy who missed you know basically all last season. Their their dynamic big time freshman in Donovan Green was ready oh. to step up and show what he could do and gets the unfortunate injury, but he's back now as a redshirt sophomore and uh, I'm excited to see him now. You know we know Jimbo would have liked to have used him and you know the heavy tight end in, in that system, but um, Colin Klein got to think that they're going to want to get Donovan Green the football and then the backfield. You know, basically, you know, a lot of these guys back when you consider Levy and Moss, Amari Daniels, the, the true freshman from a year ago, Ruben Owens, who I love. He's back now as a sophomore. And I, I just think that three headed attack and we, we know what Mike Elko's M.O. is. He wants to run the football. Um, I just love that that group with the tight end and basically a good bit of the offensive line back. You lose Layden yeah. Robinson, but you, know, you bring back Bryce Foster, Cam Dewberry, Chase Basadis. I mean. You've got some talented dude there, dudes there on that offensive line, and um, I'm excited. This is going to be tough, uh, maybe a, a throwback to tough, hard nose, grind it out football, a little bit more of a you know blue collar mentality. Mike Elko wants to bring. 
Yeah, uh, this running back room, you know, Donovan Green, I'll, we'll start there. Donovan Green was going to have a massive year last year. The ACL tear, I forget when it came, but I believe it was like two weeks to the start of the season. I mean, it was right before the season started. Goes down with that unfortunate injury. I thought Jake Johnson stepped up in the tight end room. He's, of course, gone. He's now with his brother, Max Johnson, at North Carolina. And Donovan Green's a guy who is going to have a good year. He's got to get healthy. You know, an ACL tear, he's got to get back to football speed and get ready to rock and roll for the start of the year. But I do think you'll see him out there. I think he has a good season ahead of him. And the backfield, you know, Le'Veon Moss is a dude I'm really high on. I think I think that Le'Veon Moss and Ruben Owens are going to be the dudes. I like Amari Daniels, it, and it's kind of a problem. I think you can have too many guys. I think Texas A&M might just have too many guys in the running back room. A lot of these dudes can play. You also have, don't forget, Emmett Smith's son. EJ Smith transfers in from um, Stanford. I think some people maybe have heard of Emmett Smith, you know, um, Pretty good running back during his time. And um, so Le'Veon Moss is going to be great. I think, um, you know, we talked to Spencer McLaughlin, the host of our Locked On College um, podcast, our football podcast, and he told me, like, listen, I think EJ Smith's a kid that can play. I don't think they used him well at Stanford. He used to do some Pac-12 stuff. And um, so I like these running back rooms. The offensive line is going to be, I think, some development needs to happen there. You have a lot of the guys back from last year, yes, but there was a lot of, and it was a lot of, it's not skill or size or strength. A lot of it to me is, you know, you get a twist or you get a, some kind of stunt up front that, and the offensive line wasn't ready for it. So I think um, Coach Cushing, the offensive line coach coming in from Duke with Coach Elko, I think he could be a difference maker. His offensive lines have been historically pretty good. So hopefully the development factor can be there. I just don't think Adazio was a great offensive line coach, you know. So um, I'm looking forward to this offense, and I, I do think you're going to see it. You know, last year, we Petrino, it wasn't his offense uh, until Jimbo was gone. And I think that you're going to see a legit Texas A&M offense that can move the football and score points this year thanks to all this talent and Colin Klein coming in. All right, we're going to switch gears over to the uh, defensive side when we return. Thanks for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. Coming up, more Texas A&M Spring Preview with our buddy Andrew Stefaniak, host of Locked on Aggies. Well, first, I want to remind you guys this episode is presented to you by our friends at Better Together, a new sponsor here on Locked on SEC. Better Together, that's B-E-T-T-O-R. It is the first cooperative daily fantasy application offers a familiar experience for those existing daily fantasy sports players out there with a social twist. You can play with a friend or a teammate. It provides a sense of camaraderie, enhances the social experience of watching sports, and makes you realize that DFS is fun alone, but like a lot of other things, it's better when you're doing it together with your friends. It shows that synergy from working together, giving you that better chance at winning than going at it alone. It's all about the team. Uh, and look, creates a shared experience. Splitting a contest entry gives you the feeling of being connected even when you're apart. It's a way to stay connected with your friends. Gone are the days of watching sports together in person. You're doing it remotely, but you can have fun through the Better Together app. And look, it even gives inexperienced players an immersive way to learn about daily fantasy sports or DFS as we refer to it. Team up with and follow the lead of experienced friends and teammates in a team contest. Go do this. Go download the app right now. Uh, it's better together, B-E-T-T-O-R, together. Go uh, check it out in the App Store. Sign up today. Use our promo code Locked On. That's L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N. And you're going to get a free $5 entry into any NCAA basketball contest. Uh, remember the code Locked On, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N. And it's better together because winning alone is fun, but it is better together, B-E-T-T-O-R, together. This episode also presented to you by our friends over at eBay Motors, look, passion, drive, and patience is what brings home the winning trophy. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors, it's got everything you need to maintain your vehicle, level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, maybe even just LED headlights, windshield wipers, whatever it is you need, whether you're in a power, speed, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You're always going to find exactly what you're looking for. And with that eBay guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at all the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into that MVP and bring home the victory. Keep your ride or die alive 
at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. It's ebaymotors.com. All right, as we dive back into it with our buddy Andrew Stefaniak, previewing the Texas A&M Aggies uh, spring ball style. I want to remind you guys also, if you're watching Fox Sports or ESPN all day, uh, if you have to, to turn down the volume because of all the shouting, make the switch over to Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel uh, program for you every day, bringing you all the biggest stories without all the screaming. Me and Andrew, we're not going to scream here. So check out Locked On Sports today, streaming for you on, on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day. Andrew, we talk about the Aggies' offense and what the expectations are. How about the defense? And look, they're losing some big pieces. We know big Walter Nolan, who's a stud, is transferred over to Ole Miss. We know they've lost a couple pieces here and there. Um, you know, Jordan Gilbert's over at LSU. But uh, they do bring in some pieces. You bring in Scooby Williams at the linebacker spot. Uh, you bring in Trey Jones. You bring, you bring in big Nick Scorton up there on the uh, defensive line. But you also bring back some big pieces. And Shamar Turner is the big one. Torian York, who was the awesome freshman linebacker. So, Talk a little bit about this defense, because this is where Mike Elko's specialty is. I mean, I have two words, and you already said them. It's Nick Scorton. I, I, I will overhype this dude until it comes back crashing down on me. He is going to have an incredible season. I'm Watching the tape on him, I've never seen a pass rusher. Coming from Purdue, double-digit sacks last year in the Big Ten, you know, did it in a, in a conference where you got some – Big dogs up front playing offensive line, so this isn't a you know a smaller league type of guy, a uh, smaller smaller conference type of guy. He is just a great player. Ton, I, he is so diverse in his ability to have different pass rush moves. He can do a push pull. He can do a bull rush. He can do a, a swim move. He can do a spin move. I mean, he can do everything to get to the pass rusher. Texas a of course, leads the SEC last year in sacks, right ahead of Tennessee. Um, I believe they're number seven in all of college football. So you're going to want that pressure again because the secondary is going to be a question mark. And, and you know, you got some more guys up front. I'm excited about DJ Hicks. You don't A name many might not know, he was a highly, highly, highly recruited guy in last year's recruiting class. But with how deep Texas A&M's defensive line was, you didn't see him much. He um, does a few good things in the bowl game. He's back and ready to rock and roll. I think, you know, those five stars, they don't always get on the field early. Sometimes they have to develop a little bit. So I'm excited to see him and what he's able to do this year and second year um, at Texas A&M. And then you've got the Shamars. you got Shamar Stewart. you got Shamar Turner, two great defensive linemen that are going to have a good season. So I'm excited about them. Um, Shamar Turner coming back was huge, huge um, get for the Aggies. You know, sometimes the biggest gets on your roster are getting guys back. So – that's great. The secondary will be the question mark. And the reason you know that is because Coach Elko brought in about 7 million players in the secondary. He recognized that issue immediately. I think he saw it on tape. You know, those who maybe watched the Miami game last year when Texas A&M took on Miami, you know, uh, Van Dyke threw about a ton, I mean, a ton of yards. He threw for a ton of yards. He did anything he wanted to do. Secondary wasn't good enough. You had a, I thought you had great linebackers with York and uh, Edgerton Cooper. Cooper is going to be a potential potential late first round pick, early second round pick in the NFL draft coming up. Um, and then York, the star freshman from a year ago, he's back. You had a great front seven. The issue was the guys behind them. And I think Coach Elko fixed it with the portal. You go get a Des Ricks. You go get a kid in Donovan Saunders. I'm really excited about a smaller conference player coming in from Cal Poly. I think Des Ricks is in for a huge season. And then you've still got some guys back. You got Bryce Anderson back at the nickel. You've got some guys back in this in the safety room, but you got your transfers too. Trey Jones, like you, you brought up his name earlier. Derricky Wright from Vandy. You got Marcus Ratcliffe. There's a lot coming back and a lot coming in to where I think. You get a little bit of development for those players on the roster last year who have talent but need to get to that next level. And then you bring in these guys that have played some college football or some of these guys that, you know, have a lot of college football in front of them and a guy like Des Ricks. And then Terry Bussey. Chris, have you had the opportunity to see him play football in any way, shape, or form? Yeah, I know he was a big time recruit that uh, LSU was fighting to the last minute trying to get him into their signing class, but AM ultimately able to keep him and uh yeah duke can duke and ball he is getting ready to take college football by storm 
He is, and I'm blanking on his name, uh, Travis Hunter. The, uh, Travis Hunter, the uh, Colorado, plays both sides of the ball. Any position on the field except for offensive and defensive line, I believe Terry Bussey could play and play it well. Incredible athlete, five-star player. The, the plan is for him to play corner, but he might play a little offense. Coach Elko said that after the uh, recruiting class was all you know done. That's the plan for Terry Bussey. You know, he's not here yet. He's going to be here. Um, he'll, he'll be here. Um, he's not here in the spring, but he's going to be here soon. And this kid is going to be a star. I've, I've never watched a kid play football like a recruit like this and, and been so certain of a guy being a first round pick in the NFL draft. Brian Smith, locked on recruiting expert, is right. Is you got to hear it, listen to Brian talk about Terry Bussey because he shares my excitement for this for this kid. He's going to be a star. So Texas A&M's defense with a great coaching staff. You got Bateman from Florida, Elko, of course, an incredible defensive mind, been a DC at Texas A&M. You've got the coaches there and you have got the staff there for this defense to be really, really good. Yeah, Jay, Jay Bateman and uh, Jordan Peterson going to do the co-DC thing. We're seeing that across a lot of the SEC now. There was a lot of changes this offseason in assistance, and a lot of schools going the co-DC, co-OC route. And uh, it was so interesting is, you know, we talk about Shamar Turner coming back, and obviously, yes, you lose Edron Cooper, who was your sack leader who had eight this past year, but uh, Shamar Turner had six of them, and he was disruptive, man, at, at times. And uh, having him went back with Torian York, who was your number two leading tackler, um, yeah, even with losing a Walter Nolan, you still feel really good about that that front seven, but it's all about that backside. And, again, you know, you bring in a couple guys from Florida. I mentioned Scooby Williams at linebacker, but Jaden Hill coming mm -hmm. over from uh, from Florida as well. To Ricky Wright, who I, I thought played some really good, um, you know, had some really good moments in his time at Vanderbilt as well. So it's guys that have experience. And, and to your point, Des Ricks, I mean, the, the headliner, you know, five star that was previously at Alabama and, and now coming over to to show what he can do at, at A&M. Uh, I think it's just all about getting those guys out there and, and Tyreek Ch uh, Chapel as well. Like if they could get, you know, these guys can gel and develop that chemistry. I think uh, I think they're going to be cooking with something, at least defensively. Yeah, I agree with you. You know, and, and, and Tariq Chappelle is a great um, name to bring up because he's one of those guys, kind of like Chase Basantis, the offensive lineman who I didn't bring up. Um, he was a freshman year ago. But players who put their name in the portal and pull their name out of the portal. And I think that says a lot about Coach Elko, but it also is just it, – it's sometimes, I said it a minute ago, those – those gets are the biggest, the ones that you bring guys back from your roster that entered the portal, came back, guys you thought might leave, might go to the NFL, whatever. Getting guys like that back sometimes is huge for a roster. And, you know, just looking at this, the secondary, like I said, taking that step in the right direction will make or break this defense. I feel great about the front seven. feel great about it. If this secondary can take that step, I think Texas A&M can have an elite defense. I think they're that they're they were they were the secondary being better away from having an elite defense a year ago. So losing Walter Nolan hurts. Losing uh, Cooper to the NFL draft, of course, hurts. But you've got a lot of talent still left on this roster, and a lot of football players who have a lot of high quality football to play in front of them. Nick Scorton, I can't keep raving on this kid. I think I'm serious, and this is going to be my one bold statement of the day. I know uh, Walter Nolan over at Ole Miss. I'm excited to compare their stats at the end of the season. You know, their numbers. I know that, you know, both defensive linemen, I'm excited to see their impact for their school. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I think a lot of people, well, you, you lost Nolan. You lost, well, you brought in a kid I think is just about as good as he is. So, you know, I'm I'm excited to see that. I really like, I think that, you know, but Ole Miss fans, bookmark it. I will too. And we'll see here, you know, down the road. But, um, I think that they rebuilt in a really strong way and that this defense with, with the great coaching it has is in a really good spot. Yeah. And A&M, by the way, with the number two best transfer portal class right behind A&M and, uh, you know, both of them really crushed it on the portal. All right. When we return moment of truth, we'll talk with Andrew about what are realistic expectations and uh, are we crazy to think Elko could go 10 and two. We'll talk about that next right here on locked on SEC. But first, I want to remind you guys, this episode presented to you by our friends over at Nissan. Look, this week's uh, March Madness bracket highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that has pushed it further than the rest, like 
any of all the the new 2024 Nissan SUVs. These guys were able to take it to the next level. And today we're talking to Tennessee Volunteers. They can only be described as the Armada. The high-seeded team is as hardcore as it gets out there, so it's no wonder uh, the Vols landed as a two-seed in the NCAA tournament. They're one of the favorites to win it all, despite uh, having never been to a Final Four. But this could be the year. Could they break through and do it? Uh, is this the year that Rick Barnes gets it done with the Vols? Rick Barnes been to a Final Four before at Texas, but not in his time at Tennessee. This might be the year that they do it. But uh, again, remind us a lot of the Nissan Armada because they're rugged and ready to go. Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. You can shop their great inventory over at NissanUSA.com to find out more. Again, that is NissanUSA.com. Go find out more about all the great new rides that Nissan is featuring here in 2024. All right, one more segment to go here with our buddy Andrew Stefaniak doing our uh, uh, spring preview of the Texas A&M Aggies. And, uh, Andrew, before we, we do that, I just want to mention there was some news that came out on uh, Alabama that uh, Caden Proctor, the big uh, five-star old lineman that was at Alabama, transferred this offseason to Iowa after Nick Saban retired. Uh, news coming out that Caden Proctor will officially uh, re-enter the portal and re-enroll at Alabama this spring. So, all this, all the hubbub of Proctor running and leaving Alabama, he's coming back to Bama. So uh figured we'd pass that news along to our SEC listeners. So uh, another guy that those guys on the uh, A&M defensive line ha- would have to worry about. Although I think, what, there is no uh, A&M Alabama game this year, right? They, they get them off the schedule. Nope. So nope. don't have to That's worry about I... those guys. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's let's jump into it, Andrew. Let's look at the schedule and talk about what's realistic for the Aggies. Um, obviously, the really brutal, tough uh, home opener against Notre Dame, a, a tough, tough team coming in for your non-conference starter. But then you get McNeese, a road trip at Florida, who you know Billy Napier's crew is is kind of going through it. You come home for Bowling Green, you get the the neutral field game against uh, Arkansas and Dallas, uh, and then you before you host Missouri starting October fifth. This feels like. You win that game against Notre Dame, this could really be the start of a potential 5-0 and start if things all go well. Exactly, and, and it could be. Notre Dame, ironically, Riley Leonard, the former quarterback of Mike Elko, now uh, the quarterback in the Fighting Irish, so that'll be an interesting storyline that you'll see floating around. But Notre Dame is similar to Texas A&M. They, in the way that they are, pumped up every year before the season, and then, yeah, they lose some football games. and. This is going to be a fun, a fun football game in Kyle Field. A lot, a lot of people rooting on the Aggies in that one. The 12th man is going to be rowdy. It's a football game that it's going to be hard to project right now because these rosters are going to change so much. You're going to lose guys, gain guys, both teams. And, but I mean, here's the deal. This is the way I look at it. I saw, this is how you tell the story on that football game. I saw a line come out, and of course we're talking how many months away, far, far away. But I saw a line come out that has Texas A&M favored in this game. And while I do think when this game is ready to kick off, that will move toward the Fighting Irish, I don't think it's more than a a one-and-a-half, two-and-a-half point line. This is going to be a game. This is going to be a pick Anybody can win this football game, and Texas A&M gets to play in front of their home crowd. So to say that one's not winnable, for the Aggies, it just isn't true. I mean, it is it a tough one? It, you can't write it down as a win, but you can write it down as that te- this Texas A&M team can win that football game at home. Then, you know, McNeese, it's not basketball. Shouldn't be any concerns there. Florida on the road. I'm not a Florida believer. Chris, I don't know where you stand on that. I, 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 I'm not a Florida believer. I think that Napier is going to potentially be gone. I'm, I'm not a huge – and their schedule is – the polar opposite of AMs. It is a gauntlet. I feel horrible for Gator fans. Um, I, I, I hate playing in the swamp, but I still think AM gets the win there. Um, and then Bowling Green take care of business. Arkansas, same thing kind of with Florida. I think uh Florida will be better than Arkansas, but um, I think Pittman's gonna this will be it for for Pittman. I just don't see yeah, this two, going well. Two of the him. biggest coaches on the on the uh the hot seat coming in this yeah. year, it's Sam Pittman and, and Billy Napier. So those for your two conference games of the year, yeah. You win that Notre Dame game. Again, that's why I say like you feel really good about starting five and zero, oh, and then it's of course Mizzou coming in, but you get them at home. Yeah, you and 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 that's gonna be a theme of this conversation. Every time we talk about a game I'm concerned about, where do you get them? You get them at home. 
Missouri, and I don't know where you stand on this, Chris. I for a little bit, I was on the they're like the Macarena, they're a one hit wonder. But then <laughs> I, I've you know, I've dug more into uh Coach Drink and, and and the Tigers, and I'm sold that I think Missouri is gonna be a good they're not going anywhere, I don't think. I think they've done a good job. Uh, bringing in talent, I think they've they're recruiting well. They're doing well in the portal. I think they're doing a good job. You Brady Cook back that. with a yeah. good yeah, with a good receiving core. They lose Cody Schrader, so they got to yeah. find the run game. But um, the other pieces look pretty good. But it's the same conversation as Notre Dame. You can't convince me that the line on that game is going to be higher than two and a half points, which means Texas A and M is going to be less than a. T- there will not be one football game Texas A and M plays this year where they are, I think, are more than a six point underdog. And, and, and the reason I bring up betting lines is because I think it shows you that a few things go your way, you can win 10 football games. Now, a few things don't go your way and you can win seven, which would be a little bit frustrating with how manageable this schedule is. Beating Missouri is going to be tough. They're a good football team, but you get them at home. And once again, right. to say that I don't think Texas A&M can win that football game, I can't sit here and say that. I think if the Aggies play well, they're healthy. And this coaching staff, you know, is what that we think they are. The offensive line issues are fixed like we project. The secondary is better like we project. Texas A&M can win that football game. I don't think they'll be favored, but they can win it because it's in Kyle Field. Tough place to come and win if you're Missouri. Well, let's talk about the, those last few games of the season. You, you go to Mississippi State where Jeff Lebby, obviously, it's a transition year for them. You get LSU, and that one's tough, but again, A&M has had – LSU's number in Kyle Field uh, several times in recent years at South Carolina. Another team, Shane Beamer, you know, maybe entering the hot seat if he doesn't turn that thing around. They didn't even get to a bowl game last year. Then New Mexico State at Auburn. Again, a lot of people ask, wondering if Hugh Freeze is going to take that big step forward in year two. And then what I keep calling is AM Super Bowl. I mean, I just, everything as good as Texas is with Quinn Ewers back and everything. I, that is going to be the hottest ticket in all college football on November 30th at Kyle Field. I just can't see AM is going to treat that game like it's their biggest game ever. And I can't see them losing that game. So I just run through the schedule, Andrew, and I go, even if they slip up and lose to an LSU or lose to a Missouri or, or lose one of those road games, like nine and three, 10 and two is awesome for your one of Mike Elko, considering what they've yeah. been doing under Jimbo. Exactly right. And, you know, you dodge Ole Miss, you dodge. Alabama, you don't play Georgia. So, I mean, you know, it, it, it's good. 10 and 2 is 10 and 2. It might not feel like 10 and 2 if you had to play Georgia, you know, those schools, but I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to see her and go, well, we didn't play Ole Miss. I'm not going to say that if Texas AM goes 10 and 2. So, you know, and there's trips going to Auburn, those two games at Florida, at Auburn. If you go 2 and 0 oh in those two games, I'm not concerned about South Carolina, I'm not concerned about Mississippi State. If you beat Auburn, which is a tough game, you know, tough place to play, and you beat Florida, same thing, you know, tough place to play. You win those two games, you find a way to steal two of four against Notre Dame, Missouri, Texas, which will be, once again, I think one of the most exciting football games of the season. And then LSU, you go two of four in those football games, you win two, you win 10 football games, and you never know. With the 12-team playoff, you never know. Is that a playoff football team? Maybe. And the reason I, I have a lot of people in the comments say, Andrew, you're crazy. This Texas a and we're used to it. They're not going to do that. It's all about the schedule. If we were playing Georgia and Alabama and Ole Miss instead of, you know, um, Arkansas and Florida, this conversation would be very different. The reality is this schedule is manageable and Texas A&M can win 10 football games if they fix the issues that we've discussed previously in the episode of the of the uh, secondary and the offensive line. If those two things take the steps in the right direction, like we anticipate this football team can win 10 games based on that schedule. And if Elko gets them to the playoff in year one, just go ahead and build a statue of him outside Kyle Field because mm-hmm. he's a miracle worker already. Andrew, appreciate the time, man. Thanks for uh, doing our uh, season preview here, and uh, we'll uh, talk more Aggies with you real soon, all right? Awesome. Sounds good. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you guys for making us your first listen every day. Shout out to our everydayers. Come on back tomorrow. We'll continue our spring previews right here on Locked on SEC. And hey, for your second listen, you can check out Andrew with Locked on Aggies, or you can check out uh, 
Locked On Sports, first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. It's called Locked On Sports Today. Just type that in on YouTube and you will find it. I'm Chris Gordy. This has been Locked On SEC. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow.